to Pound Posse Presents. Um, yeah, that was a little bit of a moment, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, hey, it is what it is. My, my words as the screen was starting to fade. So, wow, I'm really not prepared. <laughs> See, I don't try to hide any of that, you know? And, you know, of course, then we started laughing because what's happening? We're on the air. <laughs> anyway, here we are. It's uh, a very warm Saturday. Uh, the heat... It broke a little bit this week, even though it was still muggy. Um, but last weekend was just unbearable. Um, so, of course, you know where I'm going with this, right? Animals should not be left in cars, not even for a few minutes. Um, you know, it, it's <laughs> it's funny because there was somebody I saw post on Facebook, you know, oh, now is the season where everyone's going to start posting about not leaving your your kids and your dogs and cars we get it but you know something yeah I say it all the time and for the people who watch the show all the time you're probably rolling your eyes saying yep she's on her soapbox again but the thing of it is if there's even one person who's flipping through the channels and hears me and says wow you know something that lady's got a point or somebody for the first time sees you know Somebody shared uh, the show when it hits YouTube and it's on Facebook and, and whatever and decides, hey, you know what, I'm going to watch it tonight. Uh, they hear me talking about not leaving your animals uh, in, in a hot car and the light bulb goes on and then I've, I, I've done something, haven't I? So for those of you who have to hear it all the time, uh, I kind of apologize and for someone who might be enlightened, then that's why I'm here. You know, a car gets hot so fast. And to leave a dog in a car, even with the windows rolled down, even in the shade, uh, in five minutes, it's hot. It's unbearable. Think about how hot and uncomfortable you can get in direct sunshine in a hot, unventilated area. You know, and yeah, some of you feel, oh, the heat doesn't bother me, you know, do, you're not the dog. So put yourself in the position of an animal who can't get cool, can't do anything to help themselves, they're trapped, and it's deadly. Coming from a place where I have had to cool dogs down who got overheated, coming from a place where I actually had to work on a dog who was in full-blown heat stroke. I've seen it, it's horrible. You don't wanna do that. Dogs can die from the heat and it can happen quickly. You know, the damage that can be done is irreversible. They suffer. You're, you know, you're not like, oh yeah, it's only for a few, no, it's not for a few minutes. It's, 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 don't do it. <laughs> and by the same token, don't leave your animals tied outside in the heat. I don't care if it's, you know, shaded, it's still too hot. If your dog's panting, they're hot. Uh, same thing when you go out and you're barefoot and the pavement burns your feet. Think about their paws. Their paws are gonna burn on the hot pavement. So think about the times where you walk them. Think about the places where you walk them. You know, if you want to bring them out, first of all, if it's too hot, you shouldn't bring them out to an event. But second of all, think about if you're on pavement, how hot their feet can be. I've seen the pictures, you know, if you're on Facebook, you see them all the time, you know, the burns and the just people think. That's all I'm asking you to do is think about the safety and the health and the well-being of your pets. Take care of them. Um, I would say the way you take care of your kids, but some people aren't very good parents of their children. They're, they're skin children, so I, I don't know what kind of point I'm trying to make, but just think, think. If you question it, taking your dog somewhere, just don't do it. 
do yourself the favor, don't do it. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna step down off my soapbox now. I know, I've been there before. Um, I wanna say congratulations to a lot of the graduates out there. I know my friend Julia's son, George, is graduating today. My friend Melanie's daughter, Serena, who is also Juno's bodyguard, graduated today. And if you go to Juno's place, there are some really fabulous pictures, and I didn't steal any. I'm not trying to steal her thunder yet. It's all, the pictures are all starting to go up, and people haven't seen them yet. Um, Juno was actually in a matching cap and gown. Yeah, amazing. So go to Juno's place and check out those pictures, and congratulations. I tried to find my high school graduation picture, and for some reason I struck out. I mean, it's right there in Facebook, and I couldn't find it. Sometimes it's like that, um, because that would have been good for a laugh. <laughs> Trust me. Um, there's a whole bunch of happy birthdays. Uh, Zach, let's get our little happy birthday picture up, because I really like this. Isn't that great? <laughs> I want to say happy birthday to my godson, Michael, uh, who is 19, to my friend, Todd, uh, who is just an all-around really awesome guy and a good friend, to my friend, Amy, who is with Bikers Against Animal Cruelty and a really cool lady, to my friend, Melanie, who has been the shelter manager at Sweet Pea and whose daughter, Serena, is graduating today. And to Harley's dad, if you remember our little hero dog, Harley, who passed away this year, uh, Dan Taylor, it was his birthday this week as well. I will take the camera back. So happy birthday to all of you who celebrated this week. It's, it was a heavy week for birthdays uh, for people that you know I know, love, admire, et cetera, and so on. So. Um, it's all cool, and happy birthday to you. I'm going to talk for a few minutes about some missing animals. Uh, Zach, let's get the first picture up. This little kitty is missing in Waterbury uh, from the White Oak Lane area. She usually never leaves the yard, and it's been over a week since she's been seen. Um, you know, it, she's not a real trusting kitty, so I don't know that anybody would be able to approach her successfully or scoop her up or, or you know, try to, to, to nab her to return her. Um, there's a lot of question as to what may have happened, but the fact remains that she is, um, very loved and her people are very concerned about her. Uh, it's very hard when a pet goes missing. And so, especially the fact that she never really leaves the area and it's been so long, it, it's definitely cause for concern. So if anybody has any information about this cat um, or if you see her, and you know, when you see a missing animal um, and it, it c the light goes on and you realize, you know, it might be uh, a pet that someone's looking for, it's really important to call right away because if the person can get to that spot, uh, the sooner the better, the more the chances are, you know, that that person's going to see the animal and, you know, be able to confirm or deny uh, that it's theirs or not. But anyway, um, if you have any information or if you see this kitty, uh, please call or text right away, 203-684-9065. Once again, that's 203-684-9065. Now let's go on to the next kitty. Now we've got two posters. Um, you can kind of like take a, a flip back and forth between them. There we go. Um, this cat is missing in Belmont, Massachusetts, uh, Olmstead Drive near Trapello Road. This cat's name is Brighton, and he got out of the house and has been missing. And once again, his mom is frantic uh, trying to find him. And it's got to be horrible 
you know, uh, this, this cat literally just got out of the house. It was a total accident. And I know she's beating herself up and, you know, doing everything she can, putting up posters and, and going out and, and trying to find uh, just a sign, any little sign. If you have any information in Massachusetts, please call Hildy at 617-519-3755 or 617-489-1772. Once again, 617-519-3755 or 617-489-1772. And this brings me to um, some information that somebody shared with me. Go ahead and put up that next picture, Zach. Uh, lost cat tips. You know, you hear all kinds of things of what to do when, you know, you lose your dog. But here are some really good uh, things, uh, suggestions, and I thank you to a woman named Renee for sharing this, uh, that you can do to try to get your cat back. And this is posted on Rudy's Lost and Found Pets which is a page that went up uh, a couple few years ago now when a dog I, named Rudy was missing and he was found and the page went up for him and it sort of became a place for uh, other animals who are lost. We've kept the page going and uh, that's posted there on Facebook and it's also posted on Pound Posse Presents Facebook page so if you want to head over there and take a look and share it, hopefully you're not missing a kitty uh, and you never will be, but if you are, uh, here are some things that you can try that just might be helpful. So once again, thank you to Renee for sharing that. I will take the camera back for a few minutes and I'm gonna talk about a dog named Oliver. Um, poor Oliver. I guess you can you can scroll through those pictures. Why not? Um, poor Oliver, look at that face. I love him. Uh, he's overcome so much. He was homeless for so long. He was unwanted because he was different. And I've talked about Oliver before. He had a medical condition uh, that left him with his man parts removed. Um, and I know I st kind of stumbled over that politically correct. He's, he doesn't have a penis. He had a medical problem. You can scroll. I think there's more pictures, Zach. Um, so that put a lot of people off. Uh, you know, there were people who met him and, uh, you know, fell in love with him, but they got freaked out. I mean, he, he, he functions like any other dog. You know, he, he does not have a, a handicap in that he needs any assistance or, you know, anything different. But, you know, he was also hard to place because he needs to be at only. Uh, in April, he finally found a home and he got all the love that he wanted. You know, everybody thought that everything, everything fell into place for him only to see it be short-lived. Uh, after making sure that the landlord uh, didn't have a problem, that there were no restrictions uh, for pit bulls or breed restrictions in the complex where Oliver was going to live, um, and being assured that you know everything was going to be fine, that it, it w just wasn't a problem. Uh, now, exactly because of his breed, Oliver is being bullied out of his home, which I think is just really a god-awful thing. Uh, the neighbors started to complain because there was a pit bull in their midst and kids started taunting him, not only when he was uh, outside, but they had the nerve to do it right at the family's own windows. So, you know, I have solutions for stuff like that, but I'm gonna leave that quite alone right now. Um, read between the lines, Zach is laughing because I already, I already talked about that before the show. Uh, but Oliver, you know, needless to say, in, in the period of time when he, where he was getting the love that he waited for for so long and decompressing, now was turning around and getting stressed and his well-being was at risk, um, you know, 
to add insult to injury with this situation, the landlord turned around and came up with the info that his insurance has breed-specific legislation uh, or breed-specific breed restrictions, which is, you know, still BS uh, <laughs> in every sense of the word. Uh, so it's totally game over for Oliver's happy home, which is just, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine this poor dog must be so confused and so incredibly heartbroken because he doesn't know that he did anything wrong. He, you know, he, he didn't. Um, so transport is now being worked out to get him from upstate New York back to Long Island where he started out in, in you know, rescue. Uh, but he's going to be stuck in boarding in the interim. And when he gets back, who knows if, you know, they'll possibly have a foster lined up for him or, you know, I in a short amount of time, can they even find him a home? So I'm begging you because this, I, I hate this. I hate this with all my heart. Please share him on Facebook with all of your friends. Uh, like I said, it's got to be heartbreak to be bounced around. Uh, I believe his Facebook page is Hope for Oliver. Uh, get on there, go like the page, share him, share his posts. The post that announced him losing his home uh, is on the Pound Posse Presents Facebook page. It was the last thing I ever would have thought. You know, I was so happy, like so many other people were, when they put up that he was adopted. And I just, I really hate that this happened for him. Um, I did talk about him before. You know, the fact that he needs to be an only dog doesn't make him a bad dog. Who knows what his experiences were in the past, but, you know, better safe than sorry if there's even a, a question of whether an animal will get along with another animal because, you know, you can't reverse the damage if there's a fight, if another dog gets killed. Um, you know, you have two dogs that for 32 seconds get along and then something happens and then what happens is you know, the dog, one of the dogs ends up in the pound and then ends up dead and it, it becomes, it, you, you can't reverse the damage. So to eliminate that possibility and to safeguard everybody concerned and to make sure that you don't set a dog up to fail, you try to put it into a home where there's no other pets. And that's truly fine, like trying to find a needle in a haystack most of the time. It's, it's, Look at this face. I just, I can't even. Anyway, if you have any interest in fostering, in adopting Oliver, please email kobedog59 at aol.com. That's K-O-B as in boy, E, dog, D-O-G, 59 at aol.com. Or call 201-981-3215. Let's go right into the next dog, who is Tully. Look at how beautiful this dog is. I can't even stand it. I just want to smush that face. He's so incredibly handsome. Uh, but unfortunately, he's another sad tale of he's been waiting years for a home. It's, it's mind boggling to me that there aren't people out there who don't have a dog who wouldn't open up their home to an animal, even on a foster basis, uh, to get him out of a shelter. Uh, you can scroll through the pictures, Zach. Tully started out at the town of Hempstead Animal Shelter. Uh, he was pulled by Road to Home, which is a, a rescue out in Long Island. He was sent to a training facility. He, his evaluation was fabulous. Look at him. I can't even. I love it with the fat flowers on their heads. Anyway, uh, his evaluation came back that he's a great dog. Uh, he's very athletic. He'd be, you know, good as a hiking partner, as a running partner. Hint, hint. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he's a young enough dog where, unfortunately, he spent more of his life behind bars than not. So, you know, he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of making up to do for a life that he hasn't had the privilege to have. He's great with kids. He's great with adults. 
he's dog selective. So in the f that means in the future, he might be okay with other dogs. But for now, um, you know, until he decompresses, until he learns how to live in a home again, until, until it's the right time, and who knows how long that will be, he needs to be an only dog. Um, and no cats, unfortunately. Uh, that's, I guess, a definite. But, you know, Tully had a foster lined up, but the person withdrew their offer, or withdrew their application. So now he's sitting at the vet's office with no place to go, and that's no life. That really isn't. Um, you know, here he is. Zach, you can keep going. I don't know what happened. Um, you know, look at that face. Look at his look in his eyes and tell me that he's not just a sweet, gentle soul. And look at he's he's been there for three years looking for a home. And you know, if that sadness in his eyes in this picture doesn't say it all, I don't know what does. So if you can find it in your heart, if you have a place in your home uh, for Tully, info road to home at gmail.com i n f o r o a d t o h o m e at gmail.com and you know again he may be able to live with other dogs in the future uh it would be you know of his own choosing as to which dog or you know what the situation would be and sometimes that's best like i said only dogs that requirement is just making sure that the dog is not set up to fail. And that is such a big thing because, like I said, so many things can happen. And, you know, you end up having one dog getting thrown out of the home, uh, one or both dogs injured. Y you just, you don't want it to happen. You really don't. It doesn't make for a bad dog. So I'll take the camera back. God, I love that picture with the flowers on their heads. It's, it's like the picture of my diesel. You know what I mean? That the flowers on the heads just get me every time. Um, and I'm just going to throw in there, if you're someone who's been thinking about a dog, you don't have any other dogs, you don't have any other pets, you're thinking it might be time, um, you're not sure, fostering is the way to go. Uh, it's kind of like rent to own <laughs> in a way because you, if you decide you want to keep that pet, you can go through the adoption process and, and you know make sure that everything works out for you. If you've got the space in your home to take in one of these animals that needs to be an only, and you know, you, you've got nobody else in your home, you, you're, doing, you're doing the animals a disservice. You're the golden ticket. You're that utopia that so many animals are literally dying waiting for. Um, you know, if, if you have an inkling, if, if you've been putting it off for whatever reason, uh, there are so many rescues who would love to have you on board either as a foster or, you know, an adopter for one of these marvelous animals. And they're not all pit bulls, folks. Yes, I am a pit bull advocate and I can't I can't change that. I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to apologize for that. But there are other dogs that aren't pit bulls. If you know if they're not your style, that would have to be in an only home. That you would be able to be their ticket to forever, their ticket to life. So please consider it. Um, let's get up the poster for Jameson's Jubilee tomorrow. Um, this is the. Jameson's Journey, Jameson's Jubilee. It's a benefit for local animals. There's going to be entertainment. There's going to be a dunk tank. They've gonna ha they're going to have music and food. There's going to be a canine demo. Uh, there's raffles. It's in Ludlow, Mass. And the address is up there. It's on Chapin Street. And the event runs from 12 to 4. Um, I don't know. It, it's a tough call because I hear it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I would really love to go and kind of wish I could find someone to go and not have to drive. 
that's another story entirely. So if, you know, you want to go and it's not raining, hit me up because I really want to be there. Uh, it's, I've never been to one. We've had Jameson's Journey uh, on the show. Uh, Allison's just a wonderful person. And hint, hint, Juno will be there tomorrow. <laughs> I know this firsthand. I'll take the camera back, Zach. And um, we're kind of getting ready, I think, to wrap it up. Uh, coming up this month, probably, we're going to do my birthday dog show. It's almost that time. I like to do that, oh, maybe a month or so before my birthday, a uh, few weeks at least. I have some ideas for my birthday dogs this year, um, open to suggestions. Sometimes I kind of have to wait on them a little bit and have, uh, you know, if you pick a dog now, by the time by the time it comes to do the show, they could have a home. So I have to kind of wait a little bit before I put that out there. And I'm also going to mention there's an event in July uh, that I'm going to be doing another bake sale. So if anybody is interested in more information about that, hit me up either on Facebook or if you've got my number or if you want to email me, it's pawprints713 at AOL.com. Once again, P-A-W-P-R-I-N-T-S 713 at AOL.com. Um, we could use uh, a lot of help for the event. And I know that uh, Zach is going to be part of that. <laughs> he's, giving me, he's giving me fingers. I don't know. I don't know if they're yes fingers, if they're time fingers. Uh, I got a thumbs up. Okay, yep. So I know I can always count on him for help, which is awesome. So yeah, we're gonna need you know bakers and workers and setter uppers and breaker downers and <laughs> wrappers and and packagers and you know all kinds of things. Um, that event will be on July 24th, and uh, we've got a little time left, but it is time to start planning. Anyway, I'm going to say peace, love, and dogs. Until next time, thank you very much and have a good night.